Hey hi! In this video, let's discuss about the forces which are acting on the blade. Right? So, as we know, you know, this wind turbine blade has been divided into n number of elements. Now, that number n is 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 dependent on on the designer, right? So, say for example, we divide it into twenty number of elements. Now, let's consider any element. Let's f say for example, this element right here, the final element. Let's consider this element. Now, it would look like this. It would have a chord, which is C, and it would have a width, which is B, right? So, let's let's look. have a look at the velocity triangle and analyze what's exactly going, the forces, the angles, you know, what's exactly going with this element. So, consider this element right over you. Now, uh, and remember, this angle phi is always the the function of the magnitude of wind velocity and this linear velocity now these mag these these vec these are vectors right so they can change magnitude but it's not possible for them to change the direction because as we know we have a mechanism which is yawing mechanism so what it does basically is it always keeps the relative angle right a relative angle between the velocity of wind and the linear velocity of the element perpendicular to each other right so these vectors may change in magnitude but it won't change in the direction relative to each other but what's going to really happen is intuitively you know you have this feeling isn't it that this vector right here this relative vector will definitely change its direction and its magnitude as these vectors changes so at the same time even this angle phi is, is a function of the magnitude of wind velocity and the linear velocity isn't it so we know that you know as as the this phi changes we have to adjust our pitch angle in order to keep this alpha right here at seven degrees because we know that you know when this is at seven degrees we will be having the best possible lift to drag coefficient right here this lift to drag coefficient we want it to be maximum at so it's, it's at seven degrees isn't it so we want it to be seven degrees now let's imagine let's imagine that um, there is a wind which is flowing now for a wind turbine blade what is uh, the, the actual wind which it experiences is naturally this relative wind velocity isn't it as we know that this is the velocity which is going to be experienced by the wind turbine blade element so now now it, it will become quite interesting if you observe that this you know it, in, in science as we know that if there is a wind which is blowing right and if there is an object which comes in between it, it, it is it is intuitive that that object will, f will will experience a force right now this force as we know that that force will always be equal to half times the density of the fluid that is air in our case which is 1.225 kilograms per meter cube times the velocity now this velocity is the relative velocity between the fluid and the solid so in our case it's it's the relative velocity so it's this velocity right here omega um, w into area now the area is nothing but the chord length isn't it as we can see from this diagram area is nothing but the chord length times the width right so it's it's nothing but c times b so this dr is nothing but p now it is very intuitive you know to feel that this would be the force acting now this is where this coefficient of lift and coefficient of drag comes into picture now just imagine a uh, wind element a uh, wind turbine blade element if there is some wind just imagine it's it's very intuitive that if the if if this wind is flowing in this direction it it really won't be facing that much of area 
isn't it? Because the area it's facing is is is, is very small. It's just the the thickness of the blade. So times times is the width. So it's it's very small. But as the angle changes, you can imagine that it 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 would tend to be like a sinusoidal wave because it's it's the as the angle changes the area which would be facing the air would increase in a sinusoidal fashion that's the reason you know if you if you carefully observe the track coefficient versus angle of attack you would observe you know it's it's kind of sinusoidal it won't be exactly sinusoidal though so that is the 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 reason why this coefficient of tracks comes into picture so you know as the angle of attack changes you can see that the track coefficient increases and which is natural isn't it it's, it's obvious it has to increase because the the area which is facing the wind is increasing isn't it so we have this force which is parallel to the velocity I mean the the direction of the wind which has been experienced so in our case it's it's the relative velocity so this track force right here as you can imagine would be equal to half times the coefficient of lift times the density times the velocity square times the area now this area is C into P so it is quite simple you know to understand now let's go into lift force now when when you speak about a lift force essentially what you think is how is this force generated now as we know that you know there is a wind turbine blade and there is some wind which is flowing right so as we change the angle we can see that 